Hey, I'm Lance Phillips. Today is National Relaxation Day. My belt's undone, my pants are off, and I'm all out there. I'm Josh Ryan, and I really wish I hadn't heard what just came out of Lance Phillips' mouth. <laughs> you love it. You love That's it. That's not how I describe <laughs> my feelings on the matter. How would you describe them? What would you like to describe them to me later? <laughs> You're leaving me no room to maneuver, man. No room for error here, Josh Ryan. <laughs> hey, old Lance Phillips, Josh Ryan, gloves are off. Uh, your Tuesday evening sports show, our fun yes. Tuesday evening sports show. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of local stuff right now, so we're yeah we're a little kinda, slow this month. Yeah, we're 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 entering that transition period where we go from summer sports to winter sports. Hockey is coming up, which yep. is exciting, of course. Lots. The Bonneville Pontiacs uh, yep. getting ready for their spring, their main camp. Part of me at the end of August. So that's and also uh, lots of high school sports yes. as well as Lakeland wrestlers starting up. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff actually. No, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be, be great. Up. Catch us on Twitter, uh, the part of me at Gloves TV, or on Facebook, the Gloves New Cap. Uh, we've got Janae Jordan, sister of Chelsea Steinley, who plays yes. on the wrestlers volleyball team. She's gonna join us later in the show. The youngest of five Jordan sisters. That's a, that's crazy. Of All course, of whom uh, did a little bit of sporting in their heyday. Yeah, and she's not just like a one-trick pony as it pertains to volleyball. She's also a member of Team Saskatchewan's volleyball team, 15U, which is a big deal. We're gonna talk to her about that. Decent that's track athlete as well. Yeah, pretty good track athlete, but we're going to start on local subject here. We're going to go to local tennis, believe it or not. We're actually going to talk tennis. And recently, the Paul Douglas tournament took place uh, over the weekend, Josh Ryan, at the tennis courts at Bud Miller Park. Maxed out, 50 participants. It's all they could handle. Is that proof enough that these new tennis courts that Lloyd Minster is coming in with are a necessity? I think that is proof enough. Not just that, but you can also see... Um, the amount of times they're behind people. I mean, you have guys sitting there for 30, 40 minutes waiting for a match scheduled to be 40 minutes earlier. And you can see it also with non-competition stuff, like just people wanting to play a casual game of tennis. Um, I went out there with a coworker of ours, Brian Lentz, a couple of uh, weeks ago. We had to wait 40 minutes just to get in to get a game in. That's how many people want to play tennis in the evening in the city at that facility. And with these new courts, that really uh, relinquishes a lot of that time and space. And, gives other people a chance to play. Lloydminster has one tennis court per 7,871 people. That's that is absolutely insane. Yeah. And, and if you did any social media surfing when this came out that they were going to bring these tennis courts out, there was an uproar about this. Uh, and clearly an uproar from people who don't play tennis yeah. and really don't play any sports for that matter. And, and when, you are, when you're playing a game where there are 7,871 people per tennis court, there, there's a need for more. And, yeah. and this tournament clearly showed that there's a need for more. And I commend the city for, for stepping up and giving a community, a tennis community, something that they have needed for a long time. Yeah, they've actually been asking for the money for these new courts since 2001. So it's not like this is a recent development. This has been going on for a long time. And they've been doing that versus research of what do other communities have. Right. And all these other communities have more courts per capita than Lloyd Minster does. Even a smaller community like Camaros has more per capita than Lloyd Minster. I mean, so. Prince Albert was the next closest at just, just over 5,000. Right. That's a 2,800 per person difference. Like, that's, that's huge. It's huge. And, and so these new courts are going to slice that in half, so now it'll be roughly 3,900 people per court, which is way, way better. And these courts will be beautiful, and they're, and they're a necessity. And ideally, they get more people playing the sport of tennis. Absolutely. The more people you have participating in athletics, getting outside and enjoying Bud Miller Park, it's usually a good thing. Um, uh, speaking of tennis, it was quite the week at the Rogers Cup over in Montreal, specifically on the men's side. Uh, Milos Raonic unfortunately falling down early, but Denis Shapovalov, an 18-year-old phenom uh, from the greater Toronto area, with a Cinderella run despite being ranked outside the top 140 in the world, going all the way to the semifinals before losing to eventual winner Alexander Zverev. Um, what do you think this will do for Canadian tennis and just how important was this run to this tournament? We discussed this last week. Yes. Where we said that, I said actually, that I don't think it's tennis, Canadian tennis players that need to win. I think they need to see big names like Roger Federer and they mm. need to see Rafael Nadal and these big names at these tournaments in order to really garner interest. I was wrong. I believe that what, Sh what Shapovalov did this past weekend was magical. Uh, he rose 76 sp spots in the standings to go up to number 67 and had the world essentially talking about what he was doing. And that is going to be great 
for tennis in Canada as it pertains to young people. Yeah, it's amazing to think he had four match points saved in the first round. Incredible. And could have been out and instead fought his way back from that, beat a top player in Burdich, or Del Potro rather, beat one of his idols in Rafael Nadal. They showed great video of him as a ball boy when he was about 11 Incredible or 12 years stuff. old. And then uh, obviously going on to that semifinal. I think it also shows, it proves the impact that having the Rogers Cup has had in Canadian tennis and the success. It's been, it's been yeah. instrumental in developing yeah. tennis in this country. And also Eugenie Bouchard and Milos Raonic, their success has helped pave the way for things like this. I think this is finally proof that we're starting to see more young great tennis players. I mean, a band on the women's side has had some good showings as well. And uh, this guy's got maybe a bright future, I think. Only 18 years old, already responding well to pressure. Um, that bodes really well for him moving forward. And now he's ranked inside the top 70. So he gets a shot, actually, to play in the U.S. Open in a couple weeks. Uh, I, I just can't get over how the Rogers Cup has really developed from this small tournament, in my mind, to this massive, massive tournament that really garners a ton of interest. I mean, when you have top stars playing, uh, it can't be anything but good. And to yeah. see an 18-year-old kid, this is the key, an 18-year-old kid do what he did, young people are going to look at him and be, think, I can do this. Mm -hmm. I can do this too. So, you know, hopefully it gets them going at a young age. And I, like I said, I was wrong. I was dead wrong, and I, I didn't think I was. I thought that it'd be guys like Federer and, and, uh, and um, Nadal. Nadal, thank you very much, who would actually garner that interest. But yeah. good on uh, Shapovalov. That was an incredible run. Everyone's wrong once in a while. Yeah, not so incredible. Dick Pound, senior member <laughs> of the IOC. First of all, he has the best name I've ever heard of. But beyond that, he tore into the NHL last week saying that they are essentially destroying what their fans look forward to by not sending their players to the Olympics. And it all boils down to money. But Josh Ryan, is he right in that the NHL has betrayed its players and its fans? No. Wow. He's not even close. I th what? Not even close. Is that because Dick Pound is such a knob or is that because you just believe that? Well, I mean, he's a, he, I do think he's a knob, but he's that's just my opinion. Um, look at the facts here. The IOC, despite all the myths about amateur sport and how noble it is, they're just as evil an organization as we want to say the NFL is, FIFA is, or the NHL, if something of that matter. Those guys who run the IOC make millions of dollars off of those athletes. Millions of dollars. And the fact is, is that they're not willing to put up a few million as compensation for NHL players playing. We've already seen the effect that a player getting injured can have on an NHL team, know, such it, as John Tavares I, with the New York an Islanders. An interesting point here is that if they're going to open up paying NHL players to be at these games or paying NHL pl owners to, for these players to be here, where does it end? Do they have to now start playing, paying basketball players to be these games? Do they have to start paying all kinds of athletes? Swimmers, like where does this end? Well, first of all, why is it such a bad thing that the athletes should be paid? I'm to not compete? saying it is such a Secondly, bad thing. Secondly, is that they're not just paying any of the athletes. These specific athletes, the hockey players, are a type of athlete that make way more money than other athletics and they bring way more attention to these games. Can you name a single sport that has the same amount of attention as ice hockey? As yeah, any other sport. I, I think that anything that has a s compelling storyline is definitely going to attract people. Michael not Phelps the winning the amount of wet medals he's We're won. We're talking Winter Olympics, Olympics, though, not summer. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. It's the same thing they're going through. I don't think so. If you want to talk Winter Olympics, I, I guarantee you that seeing a, a team that's been put together, is, as you're going to see this year with all these different countries not allowing to send NHL players now, you're going to see all these teams pieced together, and that is a compelling storyline. I mean, if the Canadians happen to win a gold medal without an NHL player, it in is lineup, an amazing story. Tons like. of people are going to watch it. Tons of people are going to watch it regardless. But what you're asking business owners to do is to swallow millions of dollars, and business owners are never going to look at that as a good decision. So when you're an organization who is also making millions of dollars, you, you owe that business partner a right to at least fork some of the bill instead of continuously making money off of those NHL owners. Just then it has to go around. It has to go to every, every other athlete and every other competition that's in, in the Winter Olympics. Well, then if they all make money, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it too, I'm but I'm just saying that, that you, I, I'm not, I don't think they're going to be, well, not they're not going to. I'm not sure it's right because then they have to pay everyone. That, I, where does it end? Again, I mean, I just... Yeah, I, I'm, not sh I'm not sure if I agree or disagree with this, truthfully. It's a bit of a sticky subject. I think at the end of the day, at the very least, the NHL is not the only ones betraying their players. The IOC is in on that betrayal as well. Um, some CFL fans, I suppose, who were hoping for some discipline were betrayed uh, over the past week as that Kyrie's Herbert hit by Nick Fajardo, on Nick Fajardo rather, has not Cody Fajardo. Cody Fajardo. 
Why did I say Nick? I don't know. I think Nick sounds better. But anyway, Cody Vajardo has not resulted in a suspension or a fine. And um, those of you seen the hit obviously would probably agree with me that that's a little crazy considering how head to head that hit is. Um, why isn't something like this being fined? Uh, th this is a major problem. I, I, he, and this is not Ibera's first time at this rodeo. He, he did this uh, last season, uh, pardon me, it might have been a couple seasons ago now, against John Cornish, Cornish yes. where he essentially horse collared him after he launched himself at, at him again. And it's the same thing he did against Fajardo. He launched himself head first like a missile into Fajardo's head. If you want to protect your players, that has got to be, there has to be a fine, there has to be a suspension behind that, and it has to be enough that players look at it and think, I'm not doing that ever again. I'm not, I'm not dealing with those consequences. And, and that's a failure. That's a total failure. And, and even their new commissioner, Randy Ambrosi, has stated that he is, wants to protect their players. He wants to protect quarterbacks. That's not the way you do it. It's like the problem the NHL has had for many, many years where they say they want to protect their players, but when push comes to shove, when a nasty incident happened, no action is uh, taken. Drop the ball. And, C and the CFL, when you look at uh, the amount of money they make compared to professional leagues in the United States, is not in the same uh, ballpark at all. No. It's really it not. So if you do fine a guy, that is a much bigger impact than, say, fining an NHL player $100,000. It's not even close in the same ballpark. You're fining the majority of their living uh, they're living their wage when you find them in the CFL. And I think if you, even if you just have a small fine, it's a big deal. So Here, the fact that there was nothing is really a Here's surprise. what Hebert had to say about accusations that he's a dirty player. I don't like that. I'm aggressive, I'm violent, I tear stuff up, but I don't think it's dirty. It's usually within the rules most of the time. 99% <laughs> of the time, 98, 96% of the time, I'm pretty sure. I do what I can to be a difference maker on the field. Most of the time is, is a key, key part, of, part that. of that. Yeah. yeah. That right there, that hit on Fajardo constituted the other part of the time, because that's not legal. It's not, not legal. And the fact that nothing was done about it is flat out outrageous. It's outrageous. No argument. Domestic violence is back in the news, this time with the Dallas Cowboys and also, running back. Also outrageous. Yes. Ezekiel <laughs> Elliott, no question about it. Uh, after a year, a year-long investigation, the NFL has suspended Ezekiel Elliott six games for alleged domestic violence. Josh Ryan. Uh, is the NFL doing the right thing by levying the suspension before they have proved or disproved this, this alleged domestic this, violence? This might not be a popular take, but I don't think so. And that's because of the allegedly, as you said. The problem with the NFL having full power over the decisions made on its players in regards to things like domestic violence, um, like drug use as well, is that you're taking action before the legal system has taken action. And that's not to say the legal system can't make mistakes. Clearly, there's been mistakes made with domestic violence situations in sports and in life as well. But where do you draw the line then? At what point is the commissioner okay to do whatever he wants with making a suspension with a player who hasn't actually been convicted of anything? That being said, the league did a great job of keeping Roger Goodell kind of out of this whole thing. That's true. Good uh, PR. He is the, the good judge, PR. the executioner, and the yep. jury in, in most cases. Uh, but, but one thing that's incredible to me is Chantrell Henderson, who played for the Buffalo Bills, was suspended 10 games for his second offense of smoking marijuana, yeah. which, is, which is contrary to the league's substance, league's substance abuse policy. That was last season. Yeah. So let me get this straight. We're going to suspend a guy 10 games for marijuana use, but we're only going to suspend a guy six games for domestic violence. Yeah, I know it's alleged, but still, there, there's something wrong with this league. In, in, in answer to the question, did they do the right thing? I, I don't know. I don't know if they did. They've got to do something to say this is not acceptable, but there's going to be major egg on their face if this comes back like it actually didn't happen and they suspended him for six games. I believe it's a bit of a lose-lose situation. It if totally is. Because if you suspend him and then he's proven innocent, then what's the ramification for that? You can't pay him those games he's lost back. You can't pay the Dallas Cowboys Wait, their playoff spot back. It's and a sticky situation. We can certainly talk about the drug use of, of, of marijuana and how they're a little dogmatic and old and just stuck in the old ages of the use of marijuana in terms of its players and pain medication, how they're okay with opioids instead of drug use. But now, that'd be an entire other conversation. Re really quickly, if this comes back and he is guilty of this, he should be suspended for the remainder of the season. It, it shouldn't even be a matter of how many games you get. You're gone for the rest of the year. Which I'm fine there should with. be zero tolerance for that kind of thing. I and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I would not be offended to hear that he had been blackballed by the rest of the owners saying, we're not having this guy on our team, period.
Yeah, that is one situation I'm okay with something being blackballed. However, there's another player that I believe, and a number of other people believe, is current, be, currently rather being blackballed. That's Colin Kaepernick, the former San Francisco 49ers QB, yet to find a job in the NFL. And uh, I don't see a good reason why he is not at least a backup on a team. I haven't found a, I haven't found a satisfactory explanation for that yet. Uh, he is being blackballed by the NFL. I believe that he is being blackballed. When you have Jay Cutler, who gets signed by the Miami Dolphins to play and come out of retirement, you're going to pay Jay Cutler $10 million a year to play, and you're not going to bring in a guy like Colin Kaepernick? I believe there's something going on here. And, and I'm not saying that what he did was right or wrong, because I, I'm not here to judge that. But I believe that NFL owners believe what he was doing was wrong. And I can tell you that there's a lot of patriotic, patriotic people within those NFL ownership, within, F, within NFL ownership, and I think a lot of them probably didn't look kindly upon him taking a knee during national anthems. I don't think that's a probably. That is a certainty. The one thing that Miami, it's a flimsy excuse, but their one excuse out of it is that the numbers between Cutler and Kaepernick are somewhat similar as of recently because Cutler's last year wasn't as bad as some of his previous um, and the second part is there's not just the aspect of Colin Kaepernick with the anthem. There's also the Fidel Castro wearing shirt. There's a lot yeah, of Cuban sure. Americans in Florida, and that is a sensitive topic for them. But when you're the Seattle Seahawks, who say we don't want him as the backup on our team because it might make our other QB mad, or it might make our defense more unruly because they like him and his politics more than, say, their starting quarterback, that gets flimsier and flimsier. And then you have the Jets, who have no quarterback. They signed Josh McCowan. You have the Bravens, who won't sign Colin Kaepernick, even though they clearly need help at that position I mean, as well. John, John Harbaugh, excuses are running out. John Harbaugh is the quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, believes he's going to get signed and he's going to play this year. And I'm not so sure when you list off players like you just listed off that are playing for these teams, when yeah. Colin Kaepernick has gone to a Super Bowl and nearly won one, yeah. in fact, nearly won it against the Seahawks and, and still is without a team. And he's, he's not a bad quarterback. No. He's better than a lot of those guys. Josh McCown, I believe he's better than Jay Cutler. The fact is, no matter what you say about Colin Kaepernick, he's better than at least seven or eight starting quarterbacks in the league. And he's better than every single backup. Is he going to play this year? I think he will be signed by someone. It might take another month or two, but he will sign with the team. I don't think he's playing. Wow. He might. He might. That'll you know, be a story. Practice It'll be a story as long as he doesn't. <laughs> Coming up on the other side, it is Albert hanging out in the desk. He's going to be chilling out with us, and he is full, full, full. When is he not full, though? He's full all the time. He is full. We're back, and the gloves are still off. Albert joins us. He's off to a masquerade ball later, yes. on, uh, later on this evening. Going to yeah. get a little crunked. Actually, isn't that what all the cool kids say? Crunked? No, I wouldn't consider them Tweet. cool, but if you want. <laughs> if you want. Um, he's expanding his horizon, so that's good to see. Expand yours. And I will try to expand mine um, with... Uh, uh, Chris uh, KUC, Don Cherry will sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game at Wrigley Field on August 19th. Hashtag Cubs, hashtag Blackhawks. That I will probably tune in to see. I, don't I will absolutely. I'll purchase it if I have, have to. You, you remember Don Cherry's music video from 1993? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. No. No. Okay, everyone, do yourselves a favor. Look up Don Cherry Techno Video 1993 no on YouTube. Way. It's worth your while. <laughs> it's worth your while. Your favorite Shane, of course, uh, local, local gentleman. Your favorite yeah. Shane. I've never, ever watched the Riders lose live. Street continues. Hashtag it's all me. Of course, the Riders pounding the BC Lions this past week. I believe it was 41 8 was the final score. Uh, Good result for them. Yeah, according, according hey, to him mail. watching them live, they've never lost. Then you should watch them live all the time. All like, the time. It's, it's your fault, basically. The, the riders have struggled. Um, so this, at CA Bucks, uh, tweeted out, Thanks, must go out to the Vandals. We know your circumstances were less than ideal last night. This was tweeted yesterday, or two days ago, rather. But you showed up and gave us a game. And Lord Mr. Vandals' response was, Appreciate that very much. The health of this league relies on the often unspoken brotherhood uh, between teams, good luck the rest of the way. Obviously, there's a slight misspelling in Brotherhood, but the point is made. <laughs> you had to point that out. Yeah, it's just saying. It's a K in there. That it's belong. true though, uh, and and this is the thing with the Alberta Football League is there's a big gap between those Huge top four teams gap. and the bottom, the bottom teams, and I don't know how they're gonna they're gonna 
make it better I, other than getting Numbers. more players out? And my, I haven't spoken to the Vandals yet, but my guess is that they were short players. They were yeah. very short players. This has been yeah. an ongoing issue for them and some of these bottom bottom teams. Uh, and they can't compete against help. the likes of the Fort, Murray, Fort McMurray Monarchs or, or those top teams. That's a tough, com- is it's a tough commitment for guys. And they have tough. great players. They've, they got, they've got a great quarterback in Mike Holman and his brother Matt Holman, uh, a fantastic receiver. They've got some real talent. They just need bodies to help these guys out. For sure. Uh, more. Border City Blue Jays at Border City Jays. Your Border City Blue Jays are 2017 at Baseball Sask. Tier 2 Provincial Champs with a 7-0 victory. Solid. Solid is right. The, of course, buddy, the team that Chris King plays for. Yeah, Buddy Kinger. Kinger. He doesn't do much. Although there are some <laughs> great photos hanging around. of If you go on to, uh, and they may be on Twitter, I'm not sure, but some great photos of Chris King with some serious mutton chops that he decided to shave down the middle and leave one side on. It's not pretty. Hey, there's mail. I just think it's Kinger. That's true. <laughs> this is from uh, you know, someone you've had a little bit of beef with recently, though you respect, Arash Madani. Uh, so privileged to work with so many fine men and women behind the scenes at Rogers Cup. They care, they're talented, and produce great TV. And the key word, or key words rather, are they, they care. They care. That is massive. And it, it goes to show, I mean, the Rogers Cup coverage by Sportsnet was outstanding. And I'll be the first to say it. It does, you know, yeah, we work for New Cap Television, but it's okay to say that other networks do outstanding job yeah. covering things. And, and I think they did. And it's, a lot of it is because they care about what they do, and that's hugely important. Male the passion the for what you do, yeah. and the results will speak for themselves. I, I think minus the ability to run kind of the documentary, behind-the-scenes preview stuff that ESPN does, they're right up there with the way those Grand Slam tournaments are covered. Yeah, it's for really sure. well done. No question. Uh, this is Big Cat at Barstool Big Cat. Ah. Not safe for work. Ronaldo beats up referee. Don't watch if you're squeamish. Talking soccer, and as you just uh, saw, that was the beating up of the referee. <laughs> like soccer, soccer is a hilarious sport, and football for our friends across seas. It's, it's a soccer. hilarious sport. That's hey, that's there's mail. It's a hilarious sport. It's a it's a hilarious sport. Um, <laughs> at TSN Tool, so Dan O'Toole soon making his way back, obviously to TSN coverage. This is cool a great drinking one. game. Drink every time they show at Graham Dillette at PGA Championship. A heads up, you will end up sober. Hashtag one tweet a day. They barely showed him. Yeah. They barely showed the guy. Yeah, like one shot. It's that's the way it is, though. I mean, any kind of yeah. sport that has U.S. coverage, they they just unless he's winning the tournament, and he wasn't that far off. Quite no, frankly. he was doing well. You know, they, you got don't, they don't show them, and it's... Well, and if Tiger's crazy. playing, then no one gets on camera except Tiger. Dennis Shapovalov, at Dennis Shapo, underscore Shapo. A merci, Montreal, and thank you, Canada. I cannot thank you enough for the love and support. Hashtag, don't stop fighting. Uh, magical run by our man, Dennis Shapovalov. Yeah. How'd you like my French there? What'd you think? That wasn't bad. Merci. Not bad. This, your second time was not as good as the first time. The first time You've was got I I mail. Up nicely, though. The first time was better. I don't even know if that's actually Francais. <laughs> to roll the At Francais. what he looks like, um, this is <laughs> one of my favorites from the week, Barry Melrose looks like the guy thrown into the jukebox during a bar fight and causes the jukebox to play Taking Care of Business. Every day. <laughs> Taking hey, Care there's of mail. Business. I love how accurate those, <laughs> those what it looks Some like. Some of them are. are really far out there. Like, they're not even close. Yeah. But, but that, that one's pretty good. pretty good. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. All right, good. this is Division Six Bound at Division Six Bound. Uh, there's always the one guy in your squad every time. Who's your most hashtag Division Six Bound friend? Uh, and that... That pretty much sums it up right there. <laughs> that, uh, that's a miss. That's a miss. Uh, I just, I'd love to know what the razzing was afterwards. Oh, it'd be, it'd be unbelievable. It must have been just scorched. <laughs> um, so at Wyshynski, that's Greg Wyshynski, uh, NHL writer, very popular one, Puck Daddy podcast. Um, Biz Nasty, either discussed as a Canadian or as an NHL, either dist rather, as a Canadian or as an NHL player. And you can see here P.K. Subban, the first Canadian-born <laughs> player to have one million followers. Uh, except Paul Biznet, Biznet has had one million followers for some time now. That's true. That's that true. being said, he's not a very relevant hockey player. Who so. cares? Like, do, do people really care how many followers they have on, on social some media? Some of them can make money off it now, though. I couldn't care less. Pe- people get paid money. If they have enough Instagram followers, they get paid ad revenue. I, I mean, I like to Mail give people in information, beak. and I like to put out some good things, but I don't care if people follow me or they don't. You also like money, though, right? Yeah, but I'm not being paid on Twitter. But if you were paid on Twitter. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Maybe, maybe. I'd like that money. At Jeopardy Sports, at Jeopardy Sports, Josh Ryan, this NFL team went 4-0 in preseason in 2008. 
then went 0 and 16 during this, okay. the season. So obviously, preseason records mean everything. What is the, or who is rather, the Detroit Tigers? Uh, how about the Detroit, Detroit Lions. Lions? The Tigers or the baseball team? The Detroit Lions down. are the one. Right. Do you have time for another one, Josh Ryan? I suppose. Let's take one quick peek at that. Um, f five months ago, I had nine, 90, nine and a half hours of surgery to remove my cancerous bladder. Today, I ran, uh, rode 30 kilometers. That's Jim, Jim Van Horn. Pretty cool. Keep it going, Jim. <laughs> If you can't score, you might as well drop the gloves. The white paper on the table means it's time for score this. Yeah. Something we haven't done. That's typically our monthly, uh, our monthly segment here. That's yeah. kind of fun. We've and done that in uh, a while. I'm excited. Pardon me. I'm really excited. I know I like you video. love this. I like videos. <laughs> Josh likes videos. Yeah. What can I tell you? Yeah. If this were a show about movies, oh god, I would go off every time. <laughs> All right, let's go off. Uh, let's go off on our first video here. Of okay. course, this comes from the Rogers Cup, and uh, someone taped this at home clearly. And this has yeah, to do with the ball boy. Ah, he's flashing some leather there. Video quality aside, that's 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 such a Canadian I love it. video. Like, how great is that? Yeah. How great is that? Yeah. Pr pretty solid. Right, I don't do think it's. You know what? And, and, and admittedly, it's too bad for the ball boy because the quality of the video hurts it a little bit. Because guys, stop filming in. Uh, in uh, vertical video. I'm going to give this a seven. I just, I just can't. If you're going to film with a flipping yeah. cell phone, film it sideways in widescreen format, not yeah. the way that that was filmed. That's embarrassing. Ball boy, great, great, great snag. Very Patrick Waugh-esque. Very Patrick Waugh-esque. It was a five. There. It was a five at best. But when you, you're going to film like that, that's absolutely horrific. Yeah. Josh, this is, uh, this is a fat guy playing basketball. <laughs> This is my that favorite. That guy playing basketball. Yeah. It's my favorite video ever. <laughs> Listen to the tunes. Listen to the tunes in the background. <laughs> Here, I love the one where he, he tries to bank it off the, uh, the little shot there is there. <laughs> like, unbelievable. <laughs> I have never seen anything like this in my life. I think we what should see more. What do you think more? spurns this type of activity? <laughs> uh, Look at, uh, just having nothing better to do. <laughs> oh, my word. That is a lot of man with a lot of flair. I got a buddy, Adam Goss, who'd be real proud of this guy. Yeah. Real proud of this guy. Yeah. And he's doing it in like a garage too, which is even more impressive. <laughs> All right, Ryan. Uh, what else can you give this? It's the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I got to admit, when I watched this the first time, I had no idea what was going on. But that's a 10. That's pretty <laughs> solid work by a fat guy playing basketball. Oh, the, the video, or the sound definitely sells it. To You've me. heard of drive-by shootings? You've heard of drive-by yeah. fruitings? Both of them, yes. I've that's Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes. You know that? Yes. I don't know so, if you did. Yeah, drive-by fruitings, well, you have to, if you say it with the accent, it's a little more give away. But Drive-by fruiting. <laughs> drive-by fruiting. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a, a drive-by dunking. Really good scene, it's by It's a the way. drive-by dunking. Yeah. And it's pretty impressive, really. I mean, just cruising along. It's like, also how do, you, how do you just spot this? It's almost like it was rehearsed. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, if they, if it was rehearsed, this looks cool. These guys don't look like they know what's going on. No. Oh my word! <laughs> like that's just <laughs> insane. And look at all the look at all the guys with cameras hanging around. Well, they're all in the car together. Yeah. No, I get. Like, thanks a lot. <laughs> and then they're off. Oh. And that's all there is to it. That Josh, was, you go uh, first. I like it when you go first. That, I mean, I, I can't give everything a 10, but this was pretty great, too. Loved this. I'll go 8 on that Ooh. one. It's, it's okay. I he mean, dunked over the, top of dude. Yeah, but it, it also, his, his bag hit him in the back of the head. Yeah, because he dunked over top of dude. That's, that's not fun for anybody. That is well, not it's fun for, for the guy who dunked it was. Uh, we're on a dunk roll today. Yes. This is garbage time. But this is pretty impressive. <laughs> this is in a school cafeteria. My word. I don't know what to think about that. Um, I mean, style points make it really high, but it's not like he dunked at a particularly great height. So it's a good, it's a good one. Really. Yeah, I like it. Okay. I, I like it. I like the creativity. It makes me wish that I had thought of stuff like that in high school. 
Yeah, we or also had didn't, the athletic ability. We to also do didn't that. have like cell phones and things like no, that. No, that's true. Well, like I had a flip well, phone. I oh, know I didn't have a flip phone. I don't even yeah. think I had a cell phone. Okay, yeah. this is cool. This is from the Alberta Football League. Of course, the uh, Calgary Gators and mm -hmm. the Lloydminster Vandals playing. This is a field goal, but it's not just any field goal. How far back is this again? That's a that's a 52-yard field goal. Whoa! And he nails it. That's a 52-yard field goal, Josh wow. Ryan, in a men's senior football league game. Wow. I'm being, I'm taking one point off just, I don't, no, 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 hang on a second, hang on a second, hang on a second. <laughs> that's the first, I know I've never done that before, but that was pretty great. It's a 52-yard field goal. He figured it out. Yeah. He figured it's it out. It's a 52-yard field goal. It's impressive. It's, it's actually like, I'm surprised that people wouldn't see that and be like, hey, get that guy on the phone. And he, not only did he kick one, he kicked another one that was like 30 and change, like 39, and just missed one from 42, I think it was, or 45 or something. Like insane. All right, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. This is Mariota, Marcus Mariota. Ah, yeah. And of course, uh, this is a fan. This is before a preseason game. This is a young fan. Uh, I mean, what, what do you say? That's just and it's a not really done. cool moment. It's not done. We're going to get some more here. We're going to get some more people in here. We're going to get some photos taken. That's a really cool moment. I wish we saw more moments like this in sports. I really do. Ten. Just please, please, more professional players do stuff like this. It's amazing. What he said. It's awesome. Yeah. It's incredible. There should be more of that kind of stuff yeah. in professional sports. And a lot less of this alleged domestic violence. Janae Jordan. Yes. On the other side, we're talking Sask Volleyball and maybe some other stuff. We're back. You can keep your gloves on, but ours are off. Hey, sports fans, welcome back. Janae Jordan joins us. Nice to have you, my dear. Nice How you. are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good. Let's start with the obvious first thing. Uh, team Saskatchewan, 15U. What does it mean to you to be selected to that team? Oh, it was really, it was really something special for me. It was, it was a big compliment, you know, I to be picked so. out of the <laughs> whole province. Yeah, and I know because obviously we've met met Chelsea and had her on the show a couple of times. We knew going in uh, this winter, it was a big deal for you to make that team. You've been training for that for a couple months. Yeah, it was, um, it was, it was tough, like mentally. Also, just trying to be prepared for, mm. for tryouts and everything. Um, yeah, I trained. It was basically um, tryouts right out of club season. So I had been training throughout the whole year right before. So I was pretty prepared anyways. How, do, how does club season get you I into the right mindset mentally to tackle that task of tra trying out for that team? Well, I think you start off with, you go to your own little tournaments that you can find and then you go to the bigger tournaments and that kind of gives you an idea and then you end up at provincials and the nationals and that um, that prepares you I think a lot it gives you a good taste of what you're gonna be going into and I guess you got to see a lot of the girls you were then teammates with later on yeah um, well I played on a U16 club team so I knew most of the girls for on the U16 team I did know a lot of the girls um, on my U15 team, pro, uh, like since last year, I played um, on the Summer Games team, Rivers West, and um, so I knew a lot of the girls because most of Saskatchewan c competed. Like all of those girls, I'm pretty sure were on a uh, Summer Games team, so I knew them from that. But when you think about how far you would like to go with this, what do you what do you think about? As in, like in your volleyball career. Well, I think it's really, like, it's opening me to opportunities later on as, like, seeing coaches from universities. Um, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. yeah. That's a pretty that's big a pretty deal. deal. There's a lot too. of yeah. that. So that's really something I'm excited for because that's something I'm looking, I'd like to look into for the, my future. So. I know you're not in that grade 12 stage where you are scouting out universities necessarily, but has any of that on a preliminary stage done? Have you met, did you meet any coaches? Or, or are you even, are you yeah. scouting out sure, universities? I mean, <laughs> well, I have gone to a few like prospects camps um, down in Assiniboia. So um, it kind of gets you a bit noticed more so they can watch you throughout 
until it's time to scout. Um, there's not much of that happening now until grade 10. I guess it'll start happening more. So I'm excited for that, but I'll start looking a little harder, thinking a bit more seriously about my future. And How much of an inspiration is your sister in your path, in your volleyball path? I mean, she, I commend her for going back to school at the age she did and, and doing what she's done. When, do, you, do you look up, I mean, obviously you look up to her, I'm yeah. sure, but you know, how much of an inspiration is she to you? She means a lot because like she made it in volleyball. Like she be became part of a team and then they pulled through and <laughs> won nationals. That's, that's a huge deal. So it really gives me something to look up to. I can look forward to that later on, their celebrations. It's, it's something that she's gonna, you know, keep close to her for the rest of her life. Yeah, so. Exactly. Did that kind of give you a bit of a bug? Because I know I saw a picture of you and uh, some of the other Jordan sisters watching that final match uh, from the <laughs> your home couch. Did that give you more of a bug to get into volleyball as well, seeing that moment? Oh yeah, it was it was so exciting even just watching from, you know, our basement in Lloyd, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> watching <laughs> <laughs> nationals. Um, yeah, it was it was really exciting for me to see that. Um, something at such a big competition. It was just, you know, really amazing how, how well they pulled through. That's, yeah. fair. That's fair, it was quite the run. Okay, I, I gotta ask though about other sports, because I know that you do other things besides volleyball, uh, like track and field, yeah. namely long jump and triple jump, yeah. that you currently hold <laughs> records for in, in Bantam Girls. I do. Um, and you co-own co the triple jump record, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> is volleyball your first love or do you enjoy do you enjoy a wide variety of things including like your track and field work? Um, I would say volleyball is my first love definitely but I I really appreciate track because it it really it gives me um, lots more training strength for kind of the same mm -hmm. skills you know it helps with jumping that's what I'm doing mainly. Yeah it's shocker and that you ended up being a jumper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of in the same field <laughs> but um <coughs> Yeah, it's a, a sport I, I enjoy doing because it's um, independent. You're really working on yourself. You're focusing on your own, your own competitiveness and your own, like, you're working on how well you're going to get. You have a goal in mind. And Men's volleyball recently. I'm going over to men's. Um, the FIVB tournament in Brazil recently got bronze. So that's their first world, world medal, basically, in the sport. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when you see that, what does you think that means to the sport in Canada? Because volleyball is not what hockey is in this country. Yeah. So what what do you think that means to this country? Well, I think it's a big step. It's um, kind of, you can tell it's getting bigger. We're starting to, I don't know, get more serious. People are really starting. It's becoming more popular. And I know, like, there's a lot of athletes my age wanting to compete in this sport now. Interesting. So. Kind of the same way basketball has grown recently too. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fascinating. So, as a young person who you just said you're around lots of young people that are involved, what do you think that that needs to happen to grow this sport more in Canada? Um, I think just things like um, the camps. I think are great. Like I, there's so many kids going to these camps and the coaching at like. I know I've gone to a few camps where the coaching is phenomenal, so it really um, it motivates you to get out there and actually find a team that you can play on. That's kind of where you can start. Um, even playing elementary, <laughs> that's where <laughs> <laughs> most kids start. And Fair enough. it's not great ball, but it's it's somewhere to start, and it's where you kind of you can fall in love with the sport there. Is any sport ever great when you're first starting it? <laughs> I feel like it's kind never. Of. It never looks good. Mm. Like it's. It's pretty ugly. Yeah, well, when part. you start it, yeah, it probably doesn't start. It. You probably feel like it's great. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You, I'm sure you feel like you're on top of the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to bounce off that, actually. Um, what specifically do you like, you like about the coaches you've worked with at these camps? And then with, specifically with Team Saskatchewan, was it the technical input or was it the mental side of the game that they taught you? There was a lot of mental things that I really learned. Um, I know with Team Team Sask training, we had lots of classroom sessions and it was all mental work. And it really got you thinking about your future, what you need to like put your mind into to succeed in the game. 
and the state you need to be in to like be be motivated, be like really <laughs> um, just ready to go forward and um, willing to kind of put yourself out there. Do you have to put yourself out there a little bit, you know, living away from home, I guess, and uh, training away? Yeah, um, I think it really helped being so close to the girls. We really bonded, like, probably first few days I was away from home, and that made it really easy. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was really special. Um, you make great friends and kind of feels like a home away from home, so. Have you been keeping track of the women's national team that was just selected recently? No. Okay, I so the women's national team that was just selected, there's one one girl from Saskatchewan, one, mm -hmm. um, obviously dominated by Ontario, BC. But is there something that needs to happen in these two provinces? Because when I see Saskatchewan volleyball, and even Alberta for that matter, it, it's it's popular. It's very popular. But mm -hmm. does, is there n more that needs to be done so that these national teams have more women from this area in them? You know, I I notice that really, like. It's huge in Ontario and BC. You see those teams, and you're like, "That's a little it's daunting." A population thing too, I think. That's yeah, true. definitely. Yeah, that's um, I think there needs to be more um, teams. Like at a younger age, I know I don't know lots of girls who start very young. Like right. they'll go into high school and go to tryouts, and they're like, "Yeah, all I've played is elementary ball," and that's it's really not. Great, not good. It's not great, but um, <laughs> like they, when I was, I was lucky enough, when I was 11, they started a U12 team. So that was really perfect. And it was just triple ball. It wasn't real volleyball, but it, right. it got you, it got down the basics done. And so what is next for you? As in, what's next like for you coming up? Sport in general. Let's, we don't have to limit this to volleyball, sport in <laughs> general. I know you got school starting soon, mm -hmm. um, but what's next as far as your sporting life is concerned? Well, obviously looking towards next year, tr making yep. the team again. Um, really pushing myself to train on my own time, reach um, new levels. <laughs> um, really looking forward to setting goals and, um, you know, um, just really putting myself out there to maintain my strength and my it's important. Yeah, throughout the whole year, the whole season, because it, it is it is throughout the whole season, because you you have, I've had a month off, <laughs> basically, because <laughs> you go into school, and then right away, you're into club season, yeah. and then you have tryouts for a provincial team right at the end of your club season, and then you go straight into training, and then the competition, and then you have a month of summer, <laughs> which That's is nice. Awesome. School just around the corner. Yeah, are you excited yeah. to start school? Well, <laughs> I'm excited for school volleyball because I yeah. want to get back yeah. into the game. I don't know. Good answer. It goes without saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, Janae, listen, good luck um, the rest of the way with your schooling and uh, just your sports in general and obviously making the team again. Thank Next you. Next year, it was a pleasure having you in here, my Thank dear. Thank you. It was a pleasure Really to glad here. to have you. Thank yeah. you. I'm, I'm looking forward to falling in next year, like 16 you. Actually, you'll still be 15 you next year, won't you? No, I'll be 16, 16 you next year. Yeah. Oh, yep. High school season. A lot yeah. of stuff. Never mm -hmm. ending. You know what else is never ending? Oh, well. Of course, it's not. Nice. We're back. You can keep your gloves on, but ours are off. Uh, good talking to Janae Jordan. Yep. Yeah, she's uh, she's an up and comer. I feel in the yeah. volleyball ranks in this city. And, and this and this province of Saskatchewan, yeah, although we're on the Alberta side. One of many. I mean, you also have Taryn Bender, who played Team Sask as well, yeah. who uh, had a, has had a good season, club season as well. It'll be interesting to see how they do. I want to see how they do in the high school season before a club. See if they can elevate those local schools. You know what I want to see? Bow wow. Wow bow. Oh, we're going backwards today. Flipping wow it bow. around. We're gonna start with worst of week. And and off before we came back on, our cameraman Jim made a point of saying, uh, "Strong like bull." Uh, dumb, smart, sorry, strong like bull, smart like dump truck, I believe is how it went. And uh, you had a rebuttal to our worst of week, which is coming oh, up right, right now. This is New Jersey Governor Chris Christie uh, mouthing off at a fan at a baseball game. And uh, what did you have to say about I Governor said, Christie? I mean, I know this is a little mean-spirited perhaps, but large like bull, 
not smart like bull, not strong like bull, <laughs> much more petty than bull. Because I mean, <laughs> and, what and are you eats doing? Like, eats like bull. I just after eats all like the bull. bad As press, he's holding a thing of nachos. Uh, all the bad press Chris Christie has had. Why would you put yourself in that situation? And maybe the fan no did say something to him that was totally out of line, but I have absolutely no idea. Uh, best of the week, local, and I love local stuff, especially when it comes to best of the week. This is Rostislav Omelchenko at a Reapers game. This is a Reapers and the Edmonton Leprechaun Tiger. And let me tell you that the the Reapers worked hard for what they're about to get, real hard. Here comes Rostislav in here, number four, the big dude. Bang, that's a try. And look at the emotion afterwards. Like the emotion is incredible. It's been a rough season for them, so it was rough cool. Rough is an understatement. They're yeah. 0 and 9. They haven't won yet. Look at look at the emotion. This is a guy who's been, although he is massive. Look at the size of him. He's been playing rugby. This is his second year he's ever played rugby. I believe he is from. Uh, is I forget where they're coming from. I believe he was from Ukraine. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, and and really was fun to watch them get that try and celebrate afterwards. It was, you could tell they were having fun, even though they got clobbered. It was 51-10, I believe, was the final score. Um, but he, the interview was great. I, I just think stuff like that's awesome. I think it's awesome. I think just the idea that, you know, at, well, as much as winning is huge, and I'm certainly, as a competitive person, relate to winning, there's more than just winning when it comes into playing sports. Just when you have hard work and seeing it pay off, it doesn't necessarily come with wins all the time. No, that's for sure. Uh, of course, let's talk CPCA. We've got a couple minutes here, Josh. The CPCA finals begin right. on Wednesday. They begin Wednesday, August 16th, and there is a dead heat for fourth place. Right. So we're coming down to the wire here, and fourth place has still not been decided. The first three have. We've got Chris Molly, Wayne, Wright, Wayne Knight, pardon me, Ray Mitsuing in there. Jamie Labakane currently holds fourth, two and a half points ahead of BJ Carey. Yeah for that coveted four spot to dash for a truck in a Canadian championship. It's gonna come down to these final four days before the dash. Wow. That, that is, is incredible. That is something. It's and amazing. I, and I don't think there's a real easy favorite to pick because BJ Carey has shown he can be one of the best riders. But you also have Jamie Labacane who's been pretty consistent all year. Um, it's really going to be interesting to see how they compare going forward over the next couple of days. Like, it's going to be quite the heat. Wow, it's, it's going to be incredible. I mean, for anyone who enjoys watching chuck wagon races, they're going to get their money's worth this, this finals. It's going to be great. And uh, the fact that there's riders, drivers that are so close is really impressive. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope you found the show impressive. Always. We didn't.